Good evening, and welcome to the December 14th meeting of the City of Kalamazoo Zoning Board of Appeals, a volunteer advisory board appointed by the City Commission. Mr. Eldridge, could you please conduct a roll call? Sure. I'll start with Reynolds. Here. I'm sorry, McReynolds. My apologies. Holder. Here. Harrington. Here. Brandon Homburg. Here. Wark. Here. For each public hearing, public comments will be accepted during the times as indicated on tonight's meeting agenda. Community members that wish to provide public comments over the phone can call 888-382-9556 during the public comment period. They will enter a queue and will be prompted to offer their comments in turn. Callers will be commenting to the board live and will no longer be able to leave a recorded message. Mr. Eldridge, are there any announcements or changes to the original agenda? The only items I want to bring to the board's attention is the, uh, the add-on of the discussion of the Tony Board of Appeals interviews that occurred last week, and also under item F, we've identified all the uh, 2024 meeting dates so that uh, those dates are, are now a known quantity, and those are the only additions. All right, thank you. We will move on to the acceptance of last month's meeting minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes? I do notice one. Sorry. Uh, and because we were only at a quorum last month, that probably needs to reflect that Tony, Mr. McReynolds, is not actually present. He was absent. And the only reason I point that out is because we were at a quorum and we did have a rather lengthy issue with one of the cases, so. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Could the minutes be updated to reflect the changes, including the page number as mentioned? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes with the correction. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. please signify by saying aye. Motion carried. Now that the meeting minutes from last month have been approved, we will move on to our meeting procedure. For each request, the secretary will read the application into the public record. The applicant or representative will then have 10 minutes to provide their comments. Upon approaching the podium, we ask that the applicant or representative speak slowly, stating their name and organization, if necessary, and address, so that we can enter that information um, into the minutes. Following that, the public is invited to step up to the podium, starting with those who wish to speak in favor of the application. Slowly and clearly, please state your name and address and present your comments within the three-minute time limit. Following that, the public is invited to step up to the podium with those that wish to speak in opposition of the application or otherwise to comment and do the same. Next, we will hear any call-in comments that will be aired for the board and audience. After this, we will close the public hearing on the request. Once the public hearing is closed, the board will then conduct what is called a finding of fact, where the board states what they feel are the facts of the request. The board must approve the finding of fact Therefore, the first vote you hear is not a ruling on the request, but a vote on the finding of fact. Then the board discusses the request in order to determine a ruling. The board reserves the right to ask questions of persons who have already spoken for clarification, even though public 
the public comment portion is closed. Once discussion is ended, the board will move on to a roll call vote. A full board consists of six members with four votes required to grant a non-use or a use variance. Will the board secretary now read the first application into the record? An application, excuse me, an application for a variance for provisions of this zoning ordinance have been filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals by the Douglas Community Association. And they, request, they are requesting, um, the applicant is requesting as follows. This is a second um, agenda item. Um, that's an extension from last month's meeting. Um, but they are requesting a dimensional variance from chapter 50, 50 9.3F. 1A to allow for a new wall sign that is 100% changeable copy or LED where the changeable copy area on the wall signs in the residential district is limited to 25% of the sign area. Please note that this request will not change the zoning excuse me, classification of the properties. You. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Will the applicant please step up to the podium, sign in, provide your name, and explain the request in the 10 minutes provided. Good evening, board members. My name is Barry Gray, owner operator of BNB Services, BNB Towing and Recovery. I'm here tonight representing the interests of the Douglas Community Association on behalf of Stacy Ledbetter. Unfortunately, when Stacy was able, unable to attend due to unforeseen circumstances, please pardon her absence and know that she appreciates the work and support of the city staff and the service of the board as we endeavor to be more inclusive in our community. Um, just to reiterate the background of the Douglas. The Douglas Community Association moved to 1000 West Patterson Street in 1982. This five acre site located in the residential multifamily district includes a 28 foot square foot building with 83 parking spaces, a community garden, a gymnasium, and an outdoor recreation area. The Douglas Community Association serves individuals in the Northside neighborhood and the greater, Kalam and greater Kalamazoo community with social, recreational, and community development activities. The building also houses nine other nonprofit tenants, ranging from an autistic school to a branch of the Kalamazoo Public Library. Um, the Doug we, 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 we met with the city staff, the Douglas representatives met with the city staff and the sign contractor on the 20th, Mr. Pete came out, took a look around. We explained to him what the use of the sign was gonna be primarily for and what the secondary use was for. The sign doesn't impair anything in the neighborhood. We've reached out to the neighbors, we've reached out to other residents. Everyone lends their support for usage of the sign. It's a programmable sign that won't be operated past 11 p.m. It's programmed to shut down. So that will address any nighttime illumination during, you know, through that little walkway there. So. But it's basically for the outdoor events that we host there. Sometimes the Boys and Girls Clubs have events. We had the Black Arts Festival. We have a number of social events that happen, that happen in that park and then in uh, Westfield over there. And what we're aiming to do is highlight some of the previous events while the other events are going on. And we're also gonna use it as a tool for advertisement of things that are going on in the, that's secondary, but advertisement of things that are going on in the building, also a tool for location of voting precincts and things of that nature. And that's pretty much all I have, man. We've reviewed the staff report for tonight's meeting. We thank you for your support for the signage and know that the Douglas will be in compliance with the conditions set forth in the variance approval. So with that being said, that concludes what I have to say. Are there any further questions you guys might have? Sweet. 
have a question. Yes, ma'am. How would you feel or how would it impact um, your organization and your goals, which I, I think are fantastic, but if there was something in there, um, having the sign, the possibility of the sign being shut off at 10, mm. at 10 p.m., like if, as time goes on, and the dynamics of the neighborhood change, and maybe there's some residential. I guess what I'm I don't saying is. I don't think that would be an issue. I think that moving forward, that we would be in concert with, you know what I mean? If there, if there was a need for that, I don't think that would be, a, I don't think that would be an obstacle that we could. Okay. As long as we work in concert with the board and the members of the community, I don't think that'll be an issue. Okay. But for right now, it was set because of the, it was basically set for that a lot of time because of the switch in the hours in the summertime and things of that nature. But like I said, the sign is not very bright. It's dimmable and it's programmable. So I don't think illumination or distraction would be an issue. But if that did arise, then we could reconvene and we'd all be in concert with making that happen. Okay. If the need be. All right, yep. all right, thank you. Would staff like to make any comments related to this request? Sure, staff has just a few comments to make. Mr. Mr. Gray took many of my points. No, no you're, you're fine. Sorry, <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, you, you covered the, uh, the unique circumstances of the site, talking about the size of the acreage of the property, the size of the building, the multiple uses going on there. Um, so I guess what, what staff wants to add is, obviously this is a residential zone district like we talked about last month with a very limited amount of signage. That, the, that zone district, you know, for a, a special use, basically a, you know, a non-residential use that's permitted in the residential zone, um, it, the signage is limited to one wall sign and one freestanding sign. And, you know, and those, you know, that, uh, you know, both of those were, were already uh, uh, spoken for. There's there's channel letters on the building and there's a freestanding sign out front. So that meant any additional signage had to get a variance. And um, as was mentioned, you know, this LED panel is not being used in the uh, typical uh, advertisement manner that we're accustomed to seeing. We, we've had a lot of um, commercial operations on major thoroughfares that come before the board for sign variances. And in, in most cases, it's, it's to advertise to their customers on the public street. Um, and in this case, uh, the, the, the primary purpose of the sign is to be able to use it for events going on adjacent to the building and the green space, uh, secondarily to advertise the programming going on at the Douglas. Um, and uh, which there are many, many programs, you know, so. As well as the many resources that we offer to the community. Yes, and the, well. yes. So we'll put times and dates for, for, say for instance, the diaper drive and things of that nature. So basically, yes. Yeah, yeah, so for, you know, so for all the, you know, unique circumstances involved, staff is supporting the dimensional variances that are, um, we also feel that this can be taken as one uh, you know, voted on at the same time, one and two as they're tied together. Um, and then lastly, staff would like to see a condition tied to this that the sign is turned off um, in the, in the night, for the nighttime hours. And, um, you know, staff had provided a recommendation, but if the board feels differently on what that, what that shutoff time should be daily, then that's, uh, that would be up to the purview of the board to determine what, what time is most appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing by inviting those wishing to speak in favor of the request. Okay, all right, seeing none. Um, I will invite, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Okay. And Mr. Eldridge, are there any call-in comments? All 
I'm, ch I'm checking oh, right sure. now. And we do not have any call-in comments related to this case. Okay, thank you. Great, G-R-A-Y, yes. Very great, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> okay, and we are going to close the public hearing portion on this request. Board is now going to conduct what is called the finding of fact, where the board states what they feel are the facts of the request. Is there a motion for the finding of fact? Yes. Wasn't quite done, but we'll get through it. <laughs> I move that the finding of fact for 1000 West Patterson Street shall include all information included in the notice of public hearing dated November 29th, 2023, in the agenda packet staff provided for this request. 31 notices of public hearing were sent and one response was received. They are as follows. Um, there was a correspondence from Will Rowland, who was the neighbor. Um, located at 1114 West Patterson, which is the Kalamazoo Junior Girls, in support. A public hearing was held before the board uh, and public comments were accepted and additional documents and voice messages were as follows. There were none outside of the staff report, of course, and the other supplemental information that you guys put in your application. Okay. Um, in addition to all the things I've just mentioned, the finding of facts will also include the following. The facts presented regarding circumstances or conditions of the property or structures that are special circumstances or conditions not commonly found on other lots or structures in the same zone district that make this request unique are that this is a 2,800 square foot building um, and it consists of a community garden in addition, in addition to housing nine nonprofit organizations and it hosts various other activities and events in our community. Um, and this also includes a branch of the Kalamazoo Public Library, which is a resource, of course, that's open to everyone. Um, the goal is to advertise um, all of the events from all of the, um, the multitude of partners that they have at this facility um, to give them um, enough advertisement to be able to encourage participation from our community and involvement in our community. The facts presented regarding the cause of special circumstance are that because this property has so many tenants that um, there's multiple tenants and they need to advertise their programming um, and they don't have adequate signage. Um, the facts presented regarding whether the applicant is denied rights enjoyed by other property owners in the same zone district um, by application of the ordinance are that um, this, the signage that they wanna have um, is dimmable and programmable, um, and it's limited, I wanna say that because there's been a lot of conversations surrounding the lights and like the impediment it would be to neighbors to you know, have like enjoy their, their like darkness at night. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so um, it's limited, to, and it's it's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> and it's limited to 25% um, in the residential zone district. Um, so we can't accommodate the tenancy; it's just not adequate enough. <laughs> um, and they are limited to one wall sign right now and one freestanding sign. Um, the facts presented regarding <laughs> whether the action requested and the minimum um, is if it's the minimum action that will make it possible for this use um, for the lot or structure in a manner that does not negatively impact the public or meet the spirit of the ordinance are that this is the minimum action um, that they're just adding two signs. 
on either side of their building, um, and that is the minimum action. I should say that Barry Gray um, did stand in, um, in the space of Stacy Ledbetter, who was the executive director of the Douglas Community Association as well. Um, the, the staff, um, city staff is in support of this um, variance, but they would like to place a condition um, in regards to the lighting. I mean, I could have said that more eloquently, but that is truly a consideration of city staff. They would like to place a condition um, to turn the sign off um, as to not disturb the neighbors. The facts presented regarding whether or not the graining of the variance will adversely affect adjacent land in a material way are um, the applicant has stated that they are um, in alignment with being working in concert, um, to use their term, <laughs> with the neighborhood and with the re and with the other um, neighborhoods, the other neighbors, um, so that they can come up with something that's workable for all of them. Um, the facts presented regarding whether the granting of the variance will be generally consistent with the purposes and intent of this ordinance um, are that. Um, it will be um, if they're granted the variance. And that's it, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the finding of fact? I approve the finding of fact. Is there a second? I second that. Is there any discussion? Okay. No, I don't think no. I'm finding a fact, okay, all right. All right. All of those in favor of accepting the finding of fact, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying aye. Motion carried. I guess this would be our board discussion portion. All right, I'll go first. <clears throat> um, I mean, my reasoning on this is going to be similar to what it was last month on the sign on the front of the building, which was, I think the signage ordinances are probably meant for like a regular type of business and to limit that kind of signage, this is not that. It's more of a community center and has all these other programs. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to necessarily apply the same rule to it as harshly as you would others. Plus, I think the only, the only business or neighbor this is really going to affect is the junior girls. They're about 300 feet away, and they said they're fine with it, so I'm fine with it. So I'll vote yes. Okay. I'm in support. I told y'all that last time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Douglas Community Association is phenomenal. You've been excellent stewards um, to our community, and that's just fantastic. There, there are other nonprofit organizations um, in that building, and I really like the fact that you you want the LED sign. I think that's a great thing. Um, I'm leaning towards the 10 o'clock um, just because my, my concern is what if the dynamics of the neighborhood change? Meaning, you know, housing or, you know, what if the, the um, neighbors get a new tenant? If there's anybody in the neighborhood that it does infringe on their quality of life. I, you know, I'm wondering that hour, you know, how much is that hour going to impact the Douglas Community Association as far as, I don't know, I guess the cost benefit of that, how many people are going to see that sign um, and be able to make an informed decision about something that they're going to do between 10 and 11 o'clock at night. Just because neighborhoods change, and I, I would feel better with having it um, be 10 o'clock, or maybe putting a, putting a clause in it where it's 11, if you feel better about that, it's 11 until a neighbor or somebody you know, says, you know, this is impacting 
me in a negative way, could we make it 10? One way or another, I want that sign. I want you to get the signage. <laughs> Um, I think we should just give them what they've asked for when they're asking for 11. They've demonstrated that they've been amazing neighbors and pillars in this community. I don't think that it's beyond them to make a determination about, you know, they can make that determination on their own what time they, they want 11. Should. Yeah, I think that, I mean, when you're saying to do a condition, Pete, like, we don't have to do that. We can just give them what they've asked for, right? Is that, like... Are you asking us to vote on a condition right now? Well, the, yeah, I mean, we, we would like, staff would like a condition for a, for a shutoff time. The 11 o'clock was what, what I had talked about with the applicant when, when I was out at the property um, in late November. So that's where the 11 o'clock came from. Okay. So do we need a separate motion to add a condition time then? It, no, it would be you would make the motion and then that and then say with the condition that the sign is turned off daily by okay. Such did and did such they time. ask for a condition in the first? I mean, you suggested that to them, but they didn't say they, they didn't offer that to us. They, they said they would be open to it, and so that's when we can started I, talking. Can we just okay? Can Which, we just not give them a condition and just leave it to them to make a determination? That my vote is to leave it to them. We don't need to put a condition on them making, they can make that decision themselves when turn on their lights and stuff. Well, I, I understand and, and it is the purview of the board. Staff is recommending okay. a condition there be a that, shut -off time. That, okay. that provides a specific time. And if, and if, you're, if you wanna be as flexible as possible, I would say go with the later time, go with the 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we have to say a time. That's what we would like, yes. But we don't have to, though. Well, no, we do not have to, but he would like that to. I, okay. Staff, staff, not, not he, staff, suggesting staff. Well, staff is recommending 10. I'm just right. saying. So I suppose, look, or we're all kind of in favor of it in general, right? Mm -hmm. So we just need to nail down, are we going to include a knockoff time or not? Okay. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. So yeah, if you guys... If you guys have strong feelings, then... I have strong feelings they can turn their lights on when they want. So I guess it comes down to Gary. What's your thoughts, Gary? Well, I approve. I would approve the, the variance. Sure. Um, with the shutoff time at 11 o'clock. There you go. I'm fine with 11 o'clock. Just, okay. just to get something, just to get it done, I'm fine with the 11. Okay. I'm... And I know you prefer 10, but... That's fine. I'm fine with 11. I, I think there has to be... I mean, what if the Douglas Community Association is no longer there? What if they vacate the premises? Does the variance and go with them, then? No, the, it stays the, with the, the property. The variance goes with the property. Goes with the property. And, and the, the logic behind the 11 o'clock was if... Mm -hmm. the, if the focus of this sign is to be used in conjunction with outdoor activities. Those are not going to be going on, you know, much past when it gets dark. Sure. So, so that's why we, you know, that's why we were talking about that 11 o'clock time frame. So I see where you're coming. I mean, it goes with the property. If they, if the, if the property moves on to somebody else and they just take the sign down in 10 years, like, you know, we want to put that sign back up. They don't have to get a variance again. They are good to go. Or Assuming a, there's been no change in zoning or any other things that, mm -hmm. that can happen. Yes, a new user could just continue the use of the sign, but this this condition kind would limit feels. their use so that they couldn't leave the sign on overnight either. So it, car it carries forward. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah so the right. variance carries forward with the property, with the so does any condition you place upon the variance. Right, right. And Charlie's going to correct me if I say anything <laughs> out of line. Can we just tie the variance to the organization? Because uh, that might resolve uh, Beth's issue then. If they leave, then they take the, the variance with them. They don't leave it with the property. Can we do that? Because that... We're dealing with the, the land itself and the condition of the land. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Short answer. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. And, and, and thank you. I guess is, I, you know, you never know what 
as the neighborhood develops or if they move out. Oh, absolutely. You know, a, a strip club could come in and they could run that sign 24 hours if we don't have a, a clause put in there. No, I think these are all valid, valid concerns. So, um, I'm fine with 11. So it seems like we're all in fine. Okay. I'm done with my discussion. Okay. All right. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve the variance with a shutoff of 11 p.m. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. The first um, dimensional variance, we are going to vote on, there's two built into this. So we're going to be voting on the first one, which is um, a dimensional variance from chapter 50, 50-9.5, table 9.5-1, to allow for a 50 square foot LED panel on the west wall, where only 124 square foot sign is permitted for each approved special use and the Douglas Community Center has already utilized this signage. Madam so, Chair, we, you can tie both requests together if you'd like. You know, they're, they go hand in hand. Okay. This, yep, so. All right. Okay, we will be voting on both. Mr. Aldridge, may I have a roll call vote? Yes, and so this will be covering the 100% uh, changeable copy LED sign that is 50 square feet in area on the west side of the building. And we'll start with Wark. Yes. Harrington. Yes. Holler. Yes. McReynolds. Yes. And Vanden Hamburg. Yes. Okay. The motion to approve this variance request has been granted. We're moving on to our next agenda item. Mills. Okay. okay. Will the board secretary now read the second application into the record? Sure. Um, an application for a variance for provisions of the zoning ordinance have been filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals by... Um, Mill Street Market Property, LLC, and they are requesting, the applicant is requesting a dimensional um, variance from chapter 50, 50-8.4C to not install the required five foot planning strip, <clears throat> excuse me, um, along the front property line on Mill Street and to reduce the number of trees planted by two and reduce the number of shrubs planted by A. A dimensional variance from chapter 50, 50-8.4C 50 to not install the required five foot planting strip along the front property line on Lake Street to reduce the number of trees planted by two and to reduce the number of shrubs planted by H. Please note that this request does not, will not change the zoning classification of the properties. Thank you. Sure. Will the applicant please step up to the podium, sign in, provide your name, and explain the request in the 10 minutes provided?
My name is Dante Pineau. I work for Mitten State Engineering. Uh, we are the engineering firm that put together the plan uh, set for this property. Dante, one moment. Could you spell your last name, please? Yes, uh, P-I-N-E-A-U. Thank you. Uh, we are applying for a variance from the uh, five-foot greenbelt requirement along the property line of this uh, property. The reason being is that the main issue with this site is we are working around an existing building with a uh, addition on the back side. And given the location of the existing building it was already, I believe, um, slightly non-conforming. And uh, we are working to bring the entire site into accordance with the um, zoning ordinance. I know that the, um, the car repair shop on the uh, eastern portion of the property has been an issue um, and the owner would like to remove that completely and get the rest of the site up to uh, code to make it a much uh, nicer and more appealing part of the neighborhood. Um, the the um, issue with the buffer requirement from the property line is again purely because of where this, the existing site is, the store, and so to get minimum uh, dimensions for parking and then also an aisle, um, it becomes difficult to be able to fit that green space strip in there. Also, I believe uh, portions of the city sidewalk, I think it kind of goes over the property line in some areas. Um, so five foot off of that in addition would I increase the amount of um, area that we no longer have for drive aisle. Um, we are uh, planning to reduce the amount of curb cuts to the roads significantly. On the west side, there are two existing curb cuts and we would uh, maintain the south one furthest away from the intersection and uh, remove the north one that is, that is closer. And then the north um, property line, that whole area is basically a giant just connection to the road, not even separate curb cuts, it's just all flush. Um, so we are proposing to remove all of that and have one uh, dedicated uh, connection driveway to the, the furthest east of the property line, again, furthest away from the intersection. Um, we had initially proposed, um, because I know that the trees, the tree requirement is based on um, distance within that five foot green belt. Uh, you're amount, required a certain amount of trees per, <clears throat> I'm not sure the exact uh, linear foot, but. Yeah, one, one per 35 feet. Yeah, 35 feet, thank you. Um, so initially we had proposed to put them uh, within the right-of-way, uh, which uh, is in accordance with the rest of um, the, the road al along that strip. However, I believe uh, the city um, requested a denial of that, or the city denied that. Um, so now we are requesting that we remove those trees and if we can um, incorporate them elsewhere in the property, we will attempt to, um, but remove them out of the right of way entirely. Okay. Are there Thank any you. questions for me? Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with my question first. Uh, so you said something about remove or uh, placing the trees elsewhere? Yes. Where else would you put them? So we are proposing um, I believe like about half of where that um, existing car repair shop is, uh, is getting cut off and a green space area is being put there. So on the landscape plan, I'm not sure if you have it in front of you, but we are proposing three large trees there. Um, if the city uh, would prefer it, we could um, try to incorporate more of those trees that we're removing from the right of way into that area. Um, we are also proposing two large trees to the south of our, property, our proposed property line adjustment. Um, so we could try to, you know, we could get with our landscape architect and try to incorporate those trees in other areas That's of the site. One. They would just not be along the road frontage. Okay. 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 So the machine, the machine shop, the auto shop's coming down. Yes. And that's going to be returned to green space essentially. Yes. I believe most of it. I don't have the, I can see the. Yeah, so at, at the very least, about half of it is becoming green space, and then I believe the other half is is becoming half of the dedicated driveway approach. Okay. Um, and then, so if I'm looking at the 
what is it, page 43 of 77 by mine, just for everybody. That building on the right inside the square is out of there. Um, yes. As <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Now, as far as the curb cuts, isn't like the entire corner here just like it's just straight down flush to the to the street? So any yes. like reduction is going to be an improvement then in that. My question is, because all the way around it just goes flush to the street, the sidewalk is probably twice as wide as it needs to be maybe? Okay, yeah. Is that right? Uh, so, I believe in, at least in some areas, yes. So I would assume then extra sidewalk may be coming out and being grass or whatever. That, that is a possibility if the city would allow that. I think currently we are proposing to um, leave as much of the sidewalk as possible because it is primarily in the right of way. That's true. Um, so that would be if if that's something that the city's open to, we would we would be willing to be to remove it and um, put in new at a smaller width dimension. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you could remove some of the sidewalk, it would maybe alleviate some of the green space problem by just reintroducing it. But thank you. And just for clarification for everyone, so this what we're referring to is there's a strip of right of way between the actual sidewalk the regulation size sidewalk, I should say, and the street curb, that, that space in between has been filled in with concrete. So that's right. this part here, right? Yes. And this what? is the sidewalk that would for sure stay no matter what. Yes, so, and, this, yeah. and on this other side, I believe that's the green strip there too. Correct, Be yeah, because. And okay. you can kind of see it delineated if you look at the green, I don't know who's got a color copy of it, but here at the corner, Sorry, Tony. There is a little bit of green, and if you extend it one way and extend it the other, that kind of shows, I think, where sidewalk could come out and reintroduce green space. But yeah, and that and may I, be beyond his plan, though. Well, Although, I'll, if he's putting in, if their plan is to like remove essentially this gigantic curb cut and just limit it here, they're definitely going to do some sidewalk work, at least on that front portion. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Current disposition of the property, like this, is like where that one-story residential space is, is, or is this what? What is this? What is this document I'm looking at? That that is a survey of of the Mill Street Market. So that that one-story commercial building. This is Mill Street Market. Right. Like, this is like, Mill Street. Like this is this. Okay. And this is not represented on here, but I believe it falls in this section and this here. Is what's in the demo. Like this is coming out, and you said part is going to be driveway, basically, Got and it. then uh, green. green space. Thank you. So for the viewing audience, so there is a, a uh, survey showing the property lines and the existing building, and then there's also a plan submitted showing, well, it's a conceptual plan, showing where the landscaping will go, reconfiguration of the parking, and that sort of thing. So those are the, the two layouts we're looking at. Thank you. And that is, what, where would that strip be? Where would that strip under normal conditions go on this? The, the, the five foot buffer yes, strip? That's correct. a good question. The, the five foot buffer strip would, would start at the front property line, which in this case would be the back edge of the sidewalk and, and most cases. So it would start. And then it would here. go five feet into the property, which means five feet into the parking lot. Okay. And they don't want that. We don't want this. We want to just use this green space because we're demoing this and yeah. we just want to make this green space. It's, and I think you get a sense of the size of how, how much of an encroachment it would be to go in five feet based on the length of the cars sure. parked right up against sure. the building. So that's the, the the unique character of this particular yeah. plot. Yeah, that makes sense. Excellent. All right. And that, that is another consideration too, is that vehicles, passenger vehicles have gotten larger over the years. Um, so uh, maintaining adequate uh, aisle, maneuvering aisle for uh, angled parking, you know, we want to make sure that that's large enough to encompass, you know, uh, pickup trucks or anything that might be a larger width than a passenger vehicle. Excellent. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, would staff like to make any additional comments? Yes, staff would like to make a few comments regarding this case. Uh, 
first of all, regarding the tree and shrub plantings, just for clarification, um, for those that drove by the site or looked at the photos in the packet, um, there's really not much green space out there right now. In fact, it's close to no green space. And the applicant is um, putting forth a very admirable effort. Um, as you can see in the layout, there will be shrubs planted around the sign that's on the street corner of Lake and Mills. Um, there will be one tree planted on the west side of the building, along with some shrubs next to the handicapped parking space. There will be another cluster of shrubs on the north side of the building. Um, there's a little triangle wedge there with uh, six shrubs. And then as you look further to the east, there'll be a row of trees on the east side um, that are going to be put in on that, that property. So that's, you know, that essentially would be, um, is about half of the lot where that old auto, where the auto repair building sits now. So the comment about the, uh, the other trees that are in the right of way, yes, they, they have proposed five trees that would technically be in the city right of way, uh, which are very close to the curb along Mill Street. And um, there's a little more breathing room along Lake Street, but they're uh, still quite close to the edge of the street. Uh, and uh, the Public Services Department uh, is not, not supporting putting uh, trees out there, so, um, but I at least wanted to acknowledge that the, the applicant has offered, offered that alternative um, since the parking lot goes right up to the sidewalk. Now, what the ordinance says, so you're, you're looking at the site and you're thinking, well, there's, there's not going to be any separation. The ordinance does require a decorative fence still between the parking area and the public sidewalk, so there will be there will be some separation. This variance tonight is simply to allow for a reduction in the landscaping, the tree and shrub plantings um, for this development to move forward. So, uh, so just circling back real quick to our review criteria, as far as the, the practical difficulties, um, the age and the positioning of this building um, is probably the, the, the most challenging. There's not really a deep enough parking lot on the north or the west side of the building to have traditional 90 degree parking. So what they're proposing is angled parking with one way traffic flow. So they're, you know, they're, they're trying to utilize that space still as parking, but um, you know, given the narrow uh, nature of those two front yards, um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a challenge. And, um, and that's why the loading area and the screen dumpster are gonna be on the back side of the building, on the east side. So, uh, you know, staff is supporting this because it is um, really, you know, a, a significant step forward for uh, this property that hasn't really had any big improvements in many decades. Uh, it will also allow for, you know, more, more product uh, to you know to be put on display and sold so it'll it'll um, be a benefit to the neighborhood that the store is able to expand and um, you know it like I said it will it will there will still be a lot of greenscape being added even though they are asking for a reduction tonight on the two frontages thank you thank you I see a question no So the ordinance outlines that they're to have that strip on the front end where the parking is on Lake Street by correct, foot correct. of a strip. But what what's there now? Do they have that now? What's what's there now is is asphalt. So basically, the ordinance would requires that the first five feet starting at the front property line, going back towards the building should be a planting strip. That planting strip should have one shrub per every six feet of frontage and one tree per every 35 feet of frontage and where the 
strip is directly adjacent to parking, there should also be a decorative like fence. Like where though? Can you, sh like right here? Like there should be, I believe in this area and then over <clears throat> here somewhere. So this, this would apply on the Mill Street side. Which is? Directly, you know. Like that, a that planter, a planter. A plant, yeah, planting area. So that, so it would apply all the way down the Mill Street side of the parking lot and all the way across on the Lake Street portion. That. Why isn't where, it required right now? Is it required right now? It is required. This, the site is, like I said, the site has not changed in decades. So. I know my farm is up the street. I'm just trying to understand the code. Go ahead. Can you? Oh yes, yeah. So the, the so the code has had provisions for screening of of parking areas. For okay. Sure, it it sure, may sure. well have been in compliance with something at some point in time. So now, since when it originally yeah. went up. So now, since they're making an amendment to the property, then they have to follow the <laughs> guidelines. They're no longer going to follow. The Correct. Guidelines. Okay. Yes. Yes. So since they're going to demo that par that auto shop, y'all are like, okay, well, y'all going to have to put those planters down, <laughs> right? That's yes, okay. they have to add the landscaping, okay. yep. Okay. And but where would you want them to put that? That's not like, we're, like can you want them to put it right there? That would right. be your expectation. I, I think that's what the ordinance would require. That, yeah, that's that's why yes. Yes. And that's why they're that's here. Just not, that is, that's not reasonable. The, right. the, or, the ordinance right. lays out that that's where that planting strip should go. <laughs> but you're, you're fine. Right. Okay, so. And that okay. is fine. I, I okay. agree with you. In an ideal world, they would come all the way up to compliance. Yeah. The character and yeah. the kind of yeah. potential. So yeah. Like, can we get okay. This is not the time for no. making yes. our arguments, right? right? We haven't okay. gotten to the we, I, discussion okay, from yeah, anyone right, else. Right, yeah. All right. Thank we'll you. get Thank to you. that. Thank okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. I will now open the public hearing by inviting those wishing to speak in favor of the request to please step forward. Seeing none, I will now open the public hearing by inviting those wishing to speak in opposition of the request to please step up. Okay. Seeing none, we will wait. Mr. Eldridge is checking to see if we have any call-in comments. And for this case, we have no callers standing by. All right, thank yep. you. Okay. I will now, cl now close the public portion of this meeting. Okay. Is there any further discussion um, amongst the board? Gary? Okay. No. Okay. All right. We will move on to the finding of fact. Is there a motion for the finding of fact? Yes, I'll make the motion of finding of fact. I move the finding of facts for 1102 and 1110 Lake Street shall include all the information included in the notice public hearing dated November 29th, 2023 in the agenda packets that provided for this request. 90 notices of public hearing were sent out. There were zero responses. Um, there were no comments in favor, no comments against, and no call-ins. Um, Dante Pena, and the last name is spelled P-I-N-E-A-U, spoke for the property owner, and the owner is going to remove the um, the auto repair building, which is um, east of the the property, um, they're going to remove that, and they will that will allow for some green space and more uh, driveway. Um, they're going to reduce curb cuts that will help the ingress egress, um, and the property or the property owners are also um, going to um, 
plant more trees and um, improve the sidewalk. The staff has said that the, uh, there is no green space on the site right now and anything will be an improvement there. Uh, the age of the building is challenging and the staff is in support of the variance. That's the finding of fact. Thank you, Gary. Is there a motion to approve the finding of fact? Uh, I move to approve the finding of fact. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Madam Chair, just, just for procedural. So the, the finding of fact is, is moved by Mr. Wark as he is giving the finding of fact. So we right. just need a second and okay. then you can take it to a voice vote. Okay. All right. Is there a second? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of accepting the finding of fact, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying aye. Motion carried. Madam, Madam Chair, and as far as voting on these, because they deal with uh, ind independent frontages, I would vote on these separately. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But we can discuss them both together, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Board discussion? Anybody else want to go first? All right, I'll go first. Uh, hey, I live within a mile of this building, and this corner is ugly and always has been for the entirety of my life. And if they're going to tear down part of it and put trees and actually take care of the landscaping, anything we can do to help them improve it for themselves and for the neighborhood and city mm -hmm. as a whole, I think we need to do. Yes, I would love it if they could bring it all the way up to code, but you know what? Getting closer to code uh, is going to be better than now, which is completely outside of it. I so agree. I'm voting in favor of both. I agree. I agree with him. Totally agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eldridge may have a roll call vote. Oh, wait a minute. We, excuse me. We need to move and second them. Into yeah, the and, and, and I've got Madam Chair, you can you can ask the board for a motion. <laughs> so you you don't you know and, and and then have someone else read it in and make the motion and then someone second it. So. I make the motion and um, we're going to vote on the first variance, dimensional variance. Dimensional variance from chapter 50, 58, 50-8.4C, to not install the required five foot planting strip along the front property line on Mill Street and to reduce the number of trees planted by two and reduce the number of shrubs planted by eight. I would move that we approve this variant <laughs> or okay. second it, whichever one we need at this you're, moment. You're, you're seconding it. There we go, I'm okay. the second. Okay. Mr. Eldridge may have a roll call vote. And we'll start with McReynolds. Yes. Holler? You know I'm a yes. <laughs> Harrington? Yes. Wark? Yes. Vanden Homburg? Yes. A yeah. motion to approve this variance request has been granted. It's going to be way cuter. I hope so. Yeah. That'd be nice. All right, we need to do number two now, right? Yes. Okay. A dimensional variance from Chapter 50-8.4C to not install the required five-foot planting strip along the front property line on Lake Street 
to reduce the number of trees planted by two and to reduce the number of shrubs planted by eight. I second that. Mr. Aldridge may have a roll call vote. We'll start with Warwick. Yes. Harrington. Yes. Holder. Yes. McReynolds. Yes. Brandon Hamburg. Yes. I'm curious if you can tell us what's the timelines on the work. Okay, great. Excellent, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. The motion to approve this variance has been granted. Welcome. <laughs> Moving on to our next agenda item. Will the board secretary now read the next application into the record? Absolutely. Um, okay. Okay. Um, an application for a variance for provisions of the zoning ordinance have been filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals by Taylor Young of 1618 Park Avenue. Um, they are requesting a requesting the following a dimensional variance from chapter 50 50 8.5 AC to allow fencing proposed in the front yard on Birch Avenue and Virginia Avenue with an opacity of 100% solid fencing where 75% is the maximum opacity for fencing and the front in the front yards and a dimensional variance from chapter 50, 50-8.5B1 to allow for approximately 112 feet of six foot privacy fence in the front yard along Birch Avenue and approximately 70 feet of six foot privacy fence in the front yard um, along Virginia Avenue, where four feet is the maximum height permitted for front yard fencing. Please note that the request will not change the zoning classification of the properties. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Will the applicant please step up to the podium, sign in, provide your name, and explain the request in the 10 minutes provided. All right, good evening. Um, my name is Taylor Young. I own 1618 Park Avenue with my husband, Griffin Young. Um, we bought the home on October 30th of this year, so we're new homeowners. Um, and our request is for a six foot privacy vinyl fence. Um, and I provided the board with a substantial PowerPoint because the layout of the home is so unique, it's awkward to talk about. Um, the home faces three public roads. So the natural front of the home is Park Avenue. Our driveway is on Virginia Avenue, and that driveway separates <clears throat> kind of the, the front of the house and the back of the house, and then the back of our home faces Birch Avenue. Um, and in that block of Birch Avenue, there is only two homes. So there's one right next to us, 1608 Park, and then there's one across the street, um, which I believe has a Birch um, address. And currently, there is a four-foot chain link fence that extends um, from the back of our driveway um, down Virginia, then down Vir Birch, and then um, next to our neighbor at 1608. Um, the reason that we are requesting this variance, <clears throat> first we have two larger dogs. Um, they're Huskies, which is a breed that is known um, to run when given the chance. We have never had a, an issue with them leaving our yard, but at our previous home we did have a six foot privacy fence. Um, and it's for our security of our dogs as well as um, the community that it would be in the best interest to have a taller fence. 
Um, additionally, because we are on three public roads, it's very awkward to be in our yard at this time. You're practically standing in the road. There's not a sidewalk there, so where our yard is is essentially where people walk to go to Kendallburger Park and things like that. Um, it's, it's just very public. There's street lights. It's just really no security. Um, so that is a concern, particularly at night when we're outside with dogs. Um, we also have a new child. Um, and so thinking about the future of us being at this home, we would want somewhere that we feel secure with our child in the yard. Um, the natural backyard, which I guess, as you see on your um, paper, is, is the red plot of land. That would be where the back and rear yard um, typically would be in a home. And I provided a photo that's not where our living space is. It's just a tree and, and kind of the back of a home that would be forgotten about. We actually have an expansive deck, um, sliding doors, patio, all of that kind of thing. But that is on the Birch Avenue front yard. Um, so for us to really be able to use our yard space, it would be in the best interest to have the six foot privacy fence that does go where we are requesting. Um, the benefit to the board is that there's a non-conforming chain link right now, and we would be removing that non-conforming chain link to put in this privacy fence. Um, I guess the other considerations I think I highlighted in the PowerPoint would just be that the area already has a lower um, speed limit, 25 miles per hour, and stop signs. So when we consider that having, being on that corner lot, we know that there could be a potential obstruction and that might be a concern of the board. Um, we do want to scale the fence 20 feet away from Virginia, larger than the standard vehicle. Um, so we would hope that that would eliminate any potential concern for a visual obstruction. And also that um, because there are only two homes on that block of Birch Avenue, it's very low traffic. Mostly the traffic that we see is um, foot traffic, not vehicle traffic. So there are very few people that are impacted um, by us having a fence on that end. And with that in mind, our neighbor at 1608 being the most impacted has not expressed any concern about the project and has even notated that she wants a privacy fence of her own. So the fact that we are installing a portion that impacts her property is a benefit. And I'll take questions if they are. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Would staff like to make any comments related to this request? Yeah, I can add the staff comments in now. Um, uh, Ms. Young covered uh, a lot of the uh, practical difficulties uh, that uh, staff noted in the staff report, uh, the one being the three front yards, um, the orientation of the floor plan of the house to the south towards Birch Avenue. Um, so they, so they property has three front yards and obviously fencing is restricted in the front yards to no taller than four feet in height and has to be uh, see-through type fencing with an opacity level of no greater than 75 percent. Uh, the only yard that's yard area on this property that could have a six-foot privacy fence is directly west of the house. That is the quote rear yard which uh, when I scaled it off, it looks like it's about 22 feet from the from the house to the west property line. So it it's it's like 0.4 acres. It's a rather large piece of property. But that is, you know, that technically would be the only uh, and that and that's uh, highlighted in the one of those PowerPoint layouts that shows a rectangle to the west of the house. Um, that's that's the would be the quote rear yard space. And so the, you know, so the applicant obviously is looking to be able to put up a privacy fence to uh, expand their outdoor space and make it useful for the family and dogs and so forth. So we've got the three front yards, the floor plan. Uh, Birch Avenue is about four blocks long. So I would say it's probably ultra low traffic. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I did look at that, and uh, we do, you know, I, I, we do check for prior variances, and there actually was a fencing variance granted for the property to the east at 3510 Virginia. That is, so basically it is the, um, 
it's the corner parcel directly across Virginia Avenue from so if you if you look at their driveway it's it's the property directly on the other side of Virginia Avenue and it's again another another lot that has three frontages um, but that that variance was granted back in 2010 to allow for an extension of privacy fencing into the front yard up to 25 feet into the front yard along Park Avenue. So um, another element that the applicant has uh, offered up in their uh, information here is that the non-conforming chain link fence that extends along Birch Avenue and along Virginia Avenue would all be removed if they're able to install the, uh, the privacy fence. So, and that's another item, another, another type of fencing that isn't permissible in the front yard is chain link. And I know we have a lot of it around the city. Um, so, you know, that is, a, you know, definitely, a, you know, a, a positive that, that comes out of this. So, so staff did lend support and that support was, you know, in response to, of course, having the three frontages, the floor plan of the house, the efforts made to eliminate any sort of vision obstruction along Virginia Avenue with the privacy fence being pulled back 20 feet. Um, and then lastly, removal of all the chain link fence. So that is what I've got for staff comments. Thank you. The, like your tiny little island backed up against the park, doesn't it? Essentially, 1608 Park Ave, their driveway kind of is between us and where Kindleberger Park is, um, and that's where the ball fields are, but they tend to keep that driveway shut so traffic doesn't actually utilize the driveway that's near par uh, Birch. It utilizes the driveway that um, you would enter, I think, from Park Avenue. Okay. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing by invite, inviting those wishing to speak in favor of the request to please step up to the podium. Right. Seeing none, I will now open the public hearing by inviting those wishing to speak in opposition of the request to please step up. What, excuse me, one, one moment, we need the timer. Go ahead, sir. Sorry about that. I'm Nelson Nave. I'm an architect in Kalamazoo. I live in uh, 610 West South Street. Um, when I do projects in the city, I have to follow the zoning. Uh, but I want to talk against the fence in general. The vinyl fence that's solid and six feet high is a mistake um, to be put up uh, anywhere along a road in front of a house. You can't see through it, you can't see over it. Uh, if it's white, it's, it looks terrible. If it's beige, it still looks like plastic. Um, the, if it was a uh, wooden fence that had, what is it, 25% opening, or whatever the opening requirement is, uh, at least it's more humane than the vinyl fence, six feet, without being able to see through it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Are there any calling comments? We have no call-in comments for this case. I will now close the public portion of the meeting. Oh, Madam, 
Madam Chair, let me go ahead and put this person through. This one just came in. I'm not sure why it's not uh, automatically answering here. You don't have to call them back. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, caller. Caller, can you hear me? This is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes, my name's Richard Stewart. I'm a resident of the city in the South Town neighborhood. I wanted to call and support the, the applicant. Can you speak Clearly up, Mr. Stewart? We're having case. a little difficulty hearing you. Mr. Stewart, we can't hear you. Okay, let me try this again. Yeah, that, that call did drop. Let's see if I get him back on the line here. Mm -hmm. Well, we heard him say in support, so that's that's something about his, concrete about his intent. Okay, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying. I'm leaving it open for for them to call back, and I'm not getting any other calls coming through. Okay. So, okay. All right. Oh, and there it is, right there. Okay, one moment, please. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals, and you have three minutes to make your comments. Go right ahead. This is Richard Stewart again, South Town Neighborhood, Kalamazoo resident, supporting the applicant for a fence. This is just an example of the technical difficulties that the city often ignores. Uh, for those of us with disabilities and we rely on remote participation, I think it's important that the city treat remote participation equal to physical participation. And when the phones don't work or they disconnect us, to take that serious and that continue. This particular time I was able to get through the second time, but this is an example of how unreliable um, the current call-in uh, technology the city's using is, and often we just simply can't get in or participate. But for this item, I just wanted to call in support. Um, fencing is important today for security. Um, clearly this applicant deserves to have an approval on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. And that concludes the call-in comments. Okay. I will now close the public portion of this meeting. As a board, um, is there any further discussion or additional questions before establishing the finding of fact? Um, maybe, and she may be the one who has to answer it. So when I look at the map, the yellow line is where you want the fence to go. I mean, you can come up here. Okay, I'm going to pull that up on my phone because I can't recall exactly what I had. I've done this. I did this a while ago. Um, no, so the yellow line is actually where the current um, existing chain link is. So you can okay. see how far it extends to Virginia oh. Ave. Um, and so the blue line is, is where it would be if we were to install it as the project is right. proposed. So that's 20 okay. feet from Virginia, which would, you know, kind of cure, hopefully, that concern for visual obstruction. Thank you. That that answers the question. Yeah, we we were thinking the yellow was. I thought the yellow fence. was. No, that's that's what's there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay. I got a question for Pete. Who is 
responsible for making these goofy old islands that have <laughs> three front yards. <laughs> it, I'm sure it's some dead guy at this point, but who, who did this? this I was going to say, that, that plant yeah. was created long before me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that was 70 years ago, and, and things are... They're a little different now. A little different now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a motion for the finding of fact? Yes, uh, I move that the finding of fact for 1618 Park Avenue shall include all information included in the notice of public hearing dated November 29th, 2023, and the agenda packet staff have provided for this request. I found out there was 35 notice of public hearing set, zero responses were received, and no extra documentation. In the finding of fact, we have uh, that the residents said that they would remove the chain fence, that there will be, uh, you know, that there was a variance granted in 2010 for a Park Avenue area. Uh, <clears throat> there were three public, uh, there's three public streets surrounding this uh, property, which makes it kind of odd and, and the, the plane, the plan, the floor plans points towards the south side. <coughs> the applicant did not create any special circumstances. The floor plan does not provide direct access to the rear yard, creating private space for this uh, for this home, which the fence will uh, do, and it won't block any view on one side, you know, on one side of the street where the original fence is at now. We also had one caller call in in support of the resident in protection. And in person, we had one person talk about the complex of the fence being the color and the texture of it that uh, you know would like it to be see-through. Um, <clears throat> on the traffic side, which the fence will be pulled back, as I said before, so that would limit you know anything on that side, and that'll be all for the finding of that. Very good. May, may I just add that so the so the. Um citizen that spoke regarding the, the vinyl fencing uh, that was uh, Nelson from West South Street and the other individual that called in and expressed support uh, was uh, Richard Stewart from Portage Street. Just for our, our, our recording secretary, we'll get all this in the meeting minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I second the motion. All those in favor of accepting the finding of fact, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying aye. Motion carried. Board discussion regarding the applicant's request? Yes. Um, I understand uh, Nelson Nelson Nave's um, objection to the uh, the fence and um, the I guess the um, zoning ordinance that we have, um, but staff is in support of this, and um, there was a variance approved in 2010 on uh, a fence near that property. To me, that sets a precedent. So I'll be supporting the, the variance. Can I ask some questions of city staff surrounding the type of fence? And this is different for me because I think we should all be able to do what we want. But I am in agreement um, with this constituent voice surrounding the vinyl fencing. Um, 
is there anything, um, is there any specificity in the code surrounding, I know there's the issue of opacity, but is there an issue of like the type of fence? Like he mentioned a wood fence, like can we determine what type of fence that they got or like what does the code say as it relates the type of fence that it is, and why does it have to be vinyl? Is that just a preferential thing? Okay. Okay. Yes, okay, so for clarification, Thank the you. way the way the second motion is worded, it's to allow a six foot privacy fence in the front yard. So I did not identify fencing type because technically that is up to the applicant. It could be a solid wood, solid vinyl. Um, I don't know how you would do a solid metal fence, but that would that would be interesting. But anyways, it, yes, we are not not uh, here to design. We are simply here to address okay. the individual variances, and the one is related to the height. Obviously, six foot compared okay. with the four foot in the front yard, and the second one is the opacity, the allowance for a solid fence or privacy fence versus having a fence with openings between the boards. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so essentially it, what the board is dealing with is simply can the fence be constructed where okay. the applicant wants it and what the opacity should be. Uh, the board isn't getting into and, and really can't get into the aesthetics of the uh, building materials and, and the appearance of that. Uh, well, the construction codes may get into the, into the materials that can be used and how it can be constructed, but that's not something the board is okay is dealing with. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will speak then. Uh, I obviously take the objection or the the issue raised by Mr. Nave uh, seriously, at least in terms I. Whatever our preference is on the style or the make of the fence, it, I'm not going to comment on that. I'm more concerned about the uh, the sight lines and and being able to uh, drive safely at the corner. But obviously, when she came up and answered the answered the question that no, it's going to be sitting back from the road some 20 feet, I'm satisfied that that in general that would solve the problem of the opacity portion of it. Um, in addition, this is just an issue created by a weird, weirdly designed neighborhood that is oc occasionally catches up that odd property as to what is the front yard, what is the backyard. We had one on, was it Crosstown, I don't know, four or five months ago, some business wanted to put a building, like a garage here, and it was going to be in the side yard, but that's because like it's got basically four frontages. Um, so at a certain point, you just have to say that the uh, the zoning ordinance maybe needs to be ignored, given that there are three front yards on this building. Mm -hmm. um, and since and since the building essentially they're putting the fence on it essentially in what you would call the backyard, based on the way it faces, I'm going to vote yes and for the variance on both respects. There was another case that came before, since we're talking about precedent, I think it was in Edison and we denied their request, wasn't it? Do you remember that family that had, they wanted to have a fence very similarly, they wanted to do that and we said no to them. Um, do you recall that? I do, I do recall that. Um, and what are the distinctions of that case in this one? I, I think the distinctions, the big distinction is that was a uh, much smaller lot on a corner and the bulk of the fencing was directly against the front property line on the side street. I wish I could think of the name of the side street. I mean, there was somewhere down off of maybe Lane. Oh, is it like the corner of say Palmer and March maybe? Palmer. 
Yeah, because I saw that fence go up and then it came down pretty quick. And that's a fence that, <laughs> yes, it probably should have come down because it did block a lot of sight lines. And that is a terrible intersection anyway, and people blow through it no matter what. Yeah, so I know which one you're talking yeah. about. Anyways, it, yeah. it, it is a higher traffic street. It's actually got school a buses fair, that fair, yeah. run down there. So okay. yeah, that, that one did have some other circumstances. Okay. And there was an alley Consistent. behind okay. the property that it was going to create a, you know, vision issues and, for and folks I, pulling out. I, I think from the character of that particular property, because it's on a corner, it still had like a lot of a lot of backyard area it could have fenced in. It was just you can't coming all the way up to the sidewalk essentially. Okay, and this one is six, tw twenty feet. Right. Beyond. Essentially, okay. they're they're only going to go up to the road on what I would consider an alley. Effectively, for this property, it's an alley. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. But you all vote your own ways. <laughs> of course. Any further comments or discussion from the board? Okay. All right. Mr. Eldridge may have a roll call vote. We need we need to get the motion on the table for the request. Is this the motion to grant a dimensional variance at 1618 Park Avenue from chapter 50, 50-8.5 AC to allow fencing proposed in the front yard on Birch Ave and Virginia Ave with an opacity of 100% where 75% is the maximum opacity for fencing in the front yards? <laughs> That's the motion. I support the motion. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll start with Mr. Wark. Yes. Harrington. Yes. Holder. Yes. Bush. Bush. Bush Reynolds. <laughs> and in Hamburg. Yes. The motion to approve this variance has been granted. All right, then I move that we grant them a dimensional variance from Chapter 50, 50-8.5B1 to allow approximately 112 foot or six foot privacy fence in the front yard along Birch Avenue and approximately 70 feet of six foot privacy fence in the front yard along Virginia Avenue where four feet is the maximum height permitted for front yard fencing. And that's the motion. I second that. Okay. Mr. Aldridge may have a roll call vote. And this will be for the second variance. We'll start with Harrington. Yes. Just to mix it up here. Holler. Yes. McReynolds. Yes. Work. Yes. Vanden Hamburg. Yes. The motion to approve this variance has been granted. Moving on to our next agenda item. Will the board secretary now read the next application into the record? Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. An application for a variance for provisions of the zoning ordinance has been filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals by um, Nicole Triplett um, of 1019 Mill Road. Nicole Triplett is requesting a use variance from Chapter 50, 50-4.1, 50 Table 4.1-1 to allow for commercial use within the existing building that falls under personal improvement services and retail sales and services Oh, goodness. Where in the residential um, zone district, the proposed commercial activity would not be permitted. Please note that the request will not change the zoning classification of the properties. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Will the applicant please step up to the podium, sign in, provide your name, and explain the request in the 10 minutes provided. Hello, I am Nicole Triplett, T-R-I-P-L-E-T-T. -T. Um, I am coming for a variance uh, for 1019 Miller Road, which was previously for years, 40, 50 years or something, Georgia's appliances, where they sold appliances, worked on appliances um, for several years, and the land that is surrounding it. Uh, we purchased the property under um, the current, the previous zoning, and after purchase, it did change to residential. So um, that is, I guess, what brings me here. Um, not fully understanding um, the switch, but. Um, I am the founder of Black Wall Street Kalamazoo, which is a nonprofit that was started in 2018. I'm a Kalamazoo native. I'm a Southside girl. I have had businesses um, on the South Side. I'm a psychologist on, on Walnut Street downtown. I own Twine Urban Winery, which is on Portage Street. Uh, I'm the first African-American female winemaker in the state of Michigan, so I do really take entrepreneurship seriously. So Black Wall Street Kalamazoo has a Facebook following of about 17,000 people, and that page is situated to highlight the African-American in business, provide marketing for them, and we then took all of that and we formalized it into trainings. So we do business classes, booth camps. We have the Black Business Expo. So we provide support, resources, one-on-one -on -one, um, business meetings. We offer support. Um, and we um, have watched the, the um, esteem of the African-American businesses in Kalamazoo working with the other businesses really grow. And so that's brought a lot of um, tourism, a lot of income into our community. And now we're just looking for a space so that we can hold our actual classes and courses and um, hold those meetings and conferences and any just any of those types of things that will um, wrap around entrepreneurs. So our primary focus is the um, black entrepreneur. However, we do offer support to any of the entrepreneurs and businesses that come in by providing the platforms, the resources, and the technical support. So just asking for the variance to be approved to be able to carry out some of those, well, all of those activities. Um, this neighborhood would not be unused to this type of activity because this is what it is been uh, used to. And we're actually going to come in and make something what we believe is going to be really beautiful. If you've been across there lately, it's about, um, it's a little bit overrun with, um, you know, the building is worn, it's leaking, the parking lot has holes, um, the the grass and everything, uh, landscaping really needs some attention. Um, and so I think that it's gonna be a benefit for everyone in the community when um, we are able to fully begin and get situated there. Um, so that's a little bit of introduction to me and what we intend to do there. So if you do have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. All right, thank you. Would staff like to make any comments? Sure, this would be a perfect segue. So all those wonderful things that Ms. Triplett just mentioned, um, they fall into the use categories that are listed in the variance request. The first use category is personal improvement services. And that category allows for all kinds of 
things. I mean, some of what's listed in the ordinance is a little, uh, a little outdated, but uh, you know, it could be everything from driving school to, uh, you know, to a, um, you know, uh, you know, tanning salon and fitness center. Um, but in this case, the personal improvement is more individual instruction um, in, in various, uh, you know, business uh, etiquette and, and programming. Um, so that also, you know, goes, goes along with some of the comments about the group gatherings that's, that's indicated in the, uh, the staff report. Um, that, you know, in addition to classes, there would be space for gatherings, conferences, and other group events. Um, so again, that all, that all falls under that personal improvement service category, or services, plural. And then the, uh, the retail sales and service indoor, that is a category that, that covers um, not only the sale of products, but the offering of services in, in return for, you know, for money. Um, so that allows for um, wine tasting events to go on that allows for sale of products from the premises, whether it's wine or it's some other uh, small business that has a shop per se in the future uh, in, in this building. So uh, we were trying to uh, grab the correct categories that would uh, frame uh, Black Wall Street and um, the wonderful programs that um, are, are that are already being supported through it and will probably well will be ex expanded with this uh, much larger facility so with that being said I want to circle back now to the zoning uh, question and exactly how we ended up where we're at with uh, the uh, the RM 36 zoning for this property so back in December and January. Uh, let's, let's 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 start with with January of 2023. Um, that's when uh, the the plans were 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 laid for the zoning changes along the corridors around the city. And in many cases, it was you know the, there were corridors where the commercial zoning was more intensive than it should be based on. The development that was occurring in that area. There were other areas, um, like like this one in particular, where the, it was zoned for commercial, but it was predominantly residential in use. And this particular property was actually straddling two zone districts: the commercial community uh, business. I'm sorry, the commercial central business district, which. We're still not sure how that uh, a stretch of, of uh, parcels got zoned for CCBD that far south outside the, the actual downtown, but, but it, be it as it may, that, that commercial zoning was in place as well as the commercial neighborhood one zone district. And so looking at you know, what, what land uses were there, the planning staff uh, slated this property for rezoning to RM36, given the, the multifamily development to the north, single family development um, to the west, and then of course single family to the south in the Millwood neighborhood. And uh, so that was what was put in motion. And in February, we started the outreach for the zoning ordinance amendments that were, that were proposed, as well as the rezonings and then that carried through for the next six months as we did uh, public outreach. Um, so during that period of time, uh, Black Wall Street Kalamazoo was looking at this property and, and did, did purchase it on July 26th of this year, which was while this, this outreach and feedback process uh, was underway for these rezonings proposed as well as the ordinance amendments. Now it was October 16th that the city commission actually approved the ordinance amendments and the rezonings. And of course 
this Miller Road parcel was included in that package of rezonings. So that's when it officially became RM36. And then when the, when the applicant came forward to the city with the proposed plans, um, you know, that's when we started to, to dig in to figure out how do we uh, address the you know, proposed reuse of this commercial building now that it's been rezoned. And the determination was that this, this was appropriate for a variance given the fact it's a 6,000 square foot commercial building. Um, it has a 2,000 square foot greenhouse attached to it on the west side. Um, you know, requiring that the site be repurposed for something that's permissible in the residential zone district um, is not, not, not plausible. You know, ideally that would be great if, if uh, we were working with a vacant piece of property, but in this case, um, you know, there's, there's a, you know, a, a solid building there, um, parking lot, and uh, the greenhouse structure there's also a storage building on the property too but um, so you know so, so staff is supportive of the use variance given you know the narrow band of use categories that the use variance is being requested for and i've opened any questions the board may have i think that was a lot of information i don't understand why <laughs> it was rezoned without connecting with the new property owner. And what, like why, if she acquired the property in July of this year and you guys rezoned it in October, can I, I just, I'm not coming at you. I'm just wanting nope. to understand your- that, That's a good question. And I should have mentioned the, that with that outreach, for each property that was being rezoned, letters were sent out. So the prior owner would have received a letter, and then whenever that ownership information got updated at the, at the city assessor's office, then when we created future uh, mailing lists for these properties being rezoned, it, it would have picked up the new property owner. Now what I mean by, you know, those, those future mailings, these rezonings went before the Planning Commission first. Um, that was in September. I have my bearings here. Yes, September and then October was when it was finally approved by the, by the City Commission. So there was a public hearing at the Planning Commission and there was a second public hearing at the City Commission level. Both those were supposed to have notices sent out. Um, I, I don't know, you know, we're, we're not clear what happened to these notices. Yeah, but so you didn't receive any of that? No, and I did contact the previous owner. He claimed he did not either, but you know, right. I, I guess it's all just water under the bridge now. Um, the, my only concern, because it's been great working with um, the city trying to figure out what I need done. It's just the time that I have had to waste, the paperwork, the fees, I'm a nonprofit. So all of that is just kind of hindering the work that we wanted to do. And we already are working with a small budget, so. Sure, that's right. completely understandable. Yeah. Um, I, understand I, I knew enough working with the city because I call a lot on other properties for other business owners because that's one of the things that we found, not to go into my spiel, was people would be purchasing properties and thinking that they're gonna do hair there and they can't because it's zoning. So I became kind of a conduit to say, hey, we have a person looking into this. So, you know, I thought that I had done what, and then I got caught up <laughs> in this situation right. that it, I was just basically told that it was already underway and it, the decision had been made. So there would be no stopping it. So that's why I came to a zoning me meeting prior, just to introduce myself, just to at least put it before someone early, you know, once they did it that week, I came to that meeting. And I said, hey, just want to let you know, like I'm, I'm here, this is what's happening. It's Cause I just at least wanted someone to know about the project, maybe in zoning that had, was not aware of it. So, you know, I'm not really, 
as long as we can get it accomplished, but I do at least want there to be some understanding of how that could be hindering to um, small budgets, nonprofits, businesses, the fees, the time. You know, now we're getting into winter. So, I mean, we, we needed to do a roof, we needed to do this, that. So there could have been some things maybe that could have been happening faster if I had not had to. Right. But who knows, I don't know. Maybe he did get the letter, he didn't tell us, you know, when he was closing, I don't know. But you did say that the, um, you reached out to the, uh, the city and the process was already underway. That's what she said. And they mm -hmm. told you that you would really have to wait until after the fact, right? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. cause she said it was already, right. just they had been planning it for like a year right. and it's really already done. Yeah. So then by the time I came to the meeting to present it at the meeting, they said, we want you to continue to work with the city to see what they can do because we did already vote on this last week. So there's, it, so it's out of our hands. Okay. Yes, and that and uh, Ms. Triplett's referring to our, our project review meeting that was held, and it was later in October, just after the city yeah, came, that made the decision on the, the case. I'm sorry, on the rezoning. Oh well, so <laughs> guess that's. I'm not going to fuss about, about it. I guess we're all just okay. That's just how it is. So, <laughs> all right. Any other questions for Ms. Triplett? No. Thank you. Okay. I will now open the public hearing by inviting those wishing to speak in favor of the request to please step forward. Seeing none, I will now open the public hearing by inviting those wishing to speak in opposition to please step forward. Mr. Eldridge, do we have any call in comments? Opening up the line right now. Yes, we do. Okay. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Go ahead, caller. You have three minutes to make your comments. My name is Richard Stewart. I'm a 30 year resident of the city in the South Town neighborhood. And I wanted to give my full support for Ms. Uh, Trippett's request. I regret that she has been inconvenienced by the city staff. Larry Bell has objected to the zoning change before the zoning was blanket changed. I objected to the zoning change of my parcels on Portage Street. I had my property as well as 11 adjoining parcels under contract to be sold and developed prior to the zoning change. I objected along with my neighbors to having the taking of our zoning and we were under contract to close by the end of this month. City staff assured us that they would not object to the program before they made the zoning change, but they moved forward anyway. And now we are not closing this month. The feasibility study on our zoning problem that is identical to this issue was extended to January 17th. So a multi-million dollar development, city staff, unelected officials uh, put a kibosh on that all through this fake zoning change that inconvenienced us too. City staff needs to be held to account for this rezoning that hurt us all. 
So please award this zoning variance and stop the damage to this lady and others that were hurt by city staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. And that is the only call in we have for this case tonight. Okay, I will now close the public portion of this meeting. As a board, um, is there any further discussion or additional questions before moving on to our finding of fact? I'll be in support of the, um, the variance request. Um, there are commercial buildings on the property right now, and um, it was uh, zoned commercial just, uh, just in, what was it? Uh, it changed in October, yeah. so um, somehow she got, the property owner got kind of caught in the middle. Um, sometimes it takes, uh, if she purchased it on the 26th, it can take up to 45 days for the records to change in the city of Kalamazoo. So, um, yeah, unfortunate, but yes, I'm in, I'm in support. Well, let me make the motion for the finding of that. Okay. Uh, all right, so I move that the finding of facts for 1019 Miller Road shall include all the information in the notice of public hearing uh, that was dated November 29, 2023 in the agenda packet staff provided for this request. 66 notices of public hearing were sent, zero responses were received. We've had the public hearing. The applicant spoke in favor of the application. Why would she speak against her application? But she spoke in favor of her application. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, we also had a call from Mr. Stewart, who supports it. Um, he did voice concerns about the zoning process, but I think in general he was supportive of it uh, based on the intended use of the building originally. Uh, all right, so in addition to all those things, let's see, the finding facts should include, I'm not going to read that big paragraph, but number one should include that the building is constructed to be a commercial building. Uh, it's now zoned for residential, which would either require, I don't know, leveling it or serious renovations, which is a extreme hardship to this particular property and the property owner. That feeds into number two. Um, I know that the staff recommendation talks about the, the converging issues between the rezoning and all that, but what that comes down to is uh, she clearly believed she was buying a commercial building. Um, it's clearly intended to be a commercial building and somewhere in the zoning process, um, arbitrary decisions are made. Uh, and that's what we're here to, to help correct if possible. Um, I don't know that there's any special circumstances of the property, just that rezoning process again that kind of created this problem, uh, which I also think is, you know, I'm, I'm against creating these kinds of problems, but occasionally they happen. Good people do, good people make mistakes occasionally too, not to excuse anybody, but nevertheless. Uh, granting the variance uh, in this case would be the minimum action necessary. Literally, they're just going to use the building for what it was intended for. Um, all we need to do is give that blessing. Um, let's see, granting the variance will not adversely affect adjacent land. Uh, no, because next to it is a vacant lot that years ago used to be a greenhouse, as I recall, and on the other side of it is the post office. Uh, behind it is a neighborhood, and right in front of it is Miller Road. Um, it's not going to change anything uh, in any way. Everybody that's lived there for 30 years has seen this building, and that maybe not in maybe not in its con current condition, which is the windows are boarded up. It's probably work going on. Um, but they, they're used to that being a commercial enterprise being there. And as I recall, when George is closed, the neighborhood Facebook pages were all up in arms over another local business going out. So they're, they're not going to be against it. And since nobody was here saying they're going to be against it, uh, take that for what it is. Uh, all right, the granting of the ordinance will be generally consistent with the purposes and intent of the ordinance. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but there is some talk about the future land use map and identifying various uses for local businesses and neighborhoods, things like that. That would be in keeping with um, 
What was the language I was meaning to say there? With the purposes and intent of the ordinance. That, I think, is my motion. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Excellent. Okay. All right. All those in favor of accepting the finding of fact, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying aye. Motion carried. Okay. Board discussion regarding this applicant's request. Any additional, discu additional discussion? No, nope, I'm in favor of it. I live like less than a mile from it. I saw the work had started and then it stopped and now I understand why the work stopped. Let's yeah. get it approved and get it started again. Okay, all right, great. I, I have something to say. Um, the first thing is that I don't want to um, use this as an opportunity. You know, it appears as though Ms. Triplett has a, a good enough rapport with city staff um, and so I'm not here to be um, she doesn't need that from me, um, but just listening to the constituent feedback from other small developers, um, real estate developers, um, you know, everybody isn't as, um, you know, I think she had a really um, accommodating disposition towards the inconvenience that was, um, you know, that she had to encounter with this experience. And this is something that has happened more regularly than not with many people in our community. Um, and I think it speaks to our public participation plan. Um, and I know that, you know, Pete, earlier on in the um, session today, you kind of talked about the layers of due diligence that city staff does to um, share information with the constituents about what's happening but people are still missing things like that. And I think that it would be, I would be remiss to not um, speak to that um, so that we can get more accountability in that way um, for the constituency. Um, because everybody doesn't have, you know, I chuckle <laughs> because it's frustrating, you know, and um, I think, like I said, I think that Ms. Triplett came up and she was very, um, because I think she speaks on behalf of quite a few other entrepreneurs and it's probably better that she is, um, you know, not coming here being attitudinal with city staff and she's being nice, um, but everybody doesn't operate like that. And people shouldn't have to um, bend over backwards, not to say that being kind or being um, courteous, um, that's bending over backwards, but we're seeing that this is happening more often than not. And I think that, it, it again, I would be remiss to not say that, yes, we can um, rectify this with the ZBA, but she's talked about layers of inconvenience that this has cost her. Mr. Stewart has talked about layers of inconvenience that this has cost him. I understand that, again, as a property owner, as a business owner myself, as a developer myself, I understand what that is. Um, and being um, on this constituent board, again, I would be remiss to not say that. People that are just, um, that are just homeowners, um, are impacted by these changes in city staff says, oh, well, we did these things, we did this due diligence, and somehow these things continue to be missed. I'd like to see more accountability. Okay, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the variance request for 1019 Miller Road. Mr. Eldridge may have a roll call vote. Excuse me. McReynolds? Yes. Holler? Yes. Wark? Yes. Harrington? Yes. Vanden Hamburg? Yes. All right. Thank you for coming out as well, Mr. Nave. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> All right. 
this meeting is adjourned. We, we do have one more item of business. I didn't, I didn't get I didn't get to the microphone fast enough. Okay. So <laughs> under discussion and action items, um, we we do need to review the zoning board of appeals um, candidates that came in for interviews last week, and and that is the last item of business. Beyond that, there was just the listing of the 2024 meeting dates on the lower part of the uh, agenda page. Well, Pete, I was wondering, could we? <laughs> Um, also talk um, about these zoning changes. <laughs> I want to talk about that too. He don't, he don't want to talk about that. <laughs> don't stress can, Pete out no more. We, and you know what? It's, yes. it's late. And you know, you know maybe, maybe we need to, to have that conversation later. But I mean, I, I'm not. No, you're not. You're not the only one. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Applicants. Applicants. So, so I just, and just to give, give some form to the process here. So we, okay. we, we had two candidates that were, were talked about at, at great length. And typically what happens next is the interview team, which consisted of uh, Ms. Van den Hamburg and Ms. Harrington and Mr. Wark uh, will, you know, will provide some, you know, their their thoughts on the candidates, and then that will inform the rest of the board um, if the board is then comfortable as a whole to vote to recommend um, the city commission appoint these individuals. You know, then I can put together the appointment memo and forward that to the clerk's office. Okay. Who are they? Okay. Allison Hahn, Allison Hahn and um, Alan Sylvester. I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, just going to give you a brief overview. Okay. Sure. All right. I'll go. go. All right. Um, our first candidate, um, well, they're both, they were both. Amazing. Um, Allison has a um, rich background in human resources and a real um, personable, friendly, warm type of person. Um, she came across as um, just being very genuine and fair. And when we asked her about why she wanted to be on the board, one of the things that she said that really struck me was wanting to kind of be a liaison in the community and being open to questions and explaining processes and, you know, being that person you see at Myers and, you know, you can say, well, hey, um, the city did this, or, you know, and, and to just be able to kind of clarify things a little bit. Um, she works um, now for um, an insurance company and um, is just at a point in her life where she's looking to be more involved and be able to give back. You know we had to vote on these people, so that's it. I just want to say that. <laughs> oh, well, I have to vote on them. How no, many? Well, we already did. Yeah, already did. We, yes, we already So I just think we talk about Allison first and then Alan next. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. So anything else about Allison? No. Um, Oh, very nice. And yeah. the other one was yeah. Alan. Mm -hmm. the, uh, did you want to say anything, Gary, about Allison? You were, no. you were there? Okay. Um, it, our next candidate, we just had to, some of us on the board had to, to step back and do a lot of soul searching and thinking about diversity and sometimes assigning feelings or thoughts to someone or a situation. So the um, only person that I can speak for um, candidly is myself. And so what happened with Mr. Salvester, my understanding of looking at his credentials, he's overqualified for the position. He's definitely, you know, can, can serve 
Um, he served on the Zoning Board of Appeals in the 80s. He is a property owner. Um, he's looking to be an alternate. And when I was reading his resume and just some of his references and things like that, um, I was concerned because he is um, a property owner with Lisa uh, Wil Wilcott and some of those properties um, don't have a very good, re this is just me paraphrasing, yeah. a very good reputation. Or, so to my way of thinking, it was easier to just, I have this feeling he's a developer, I, I, I don't necessarily like his association and all of that, so forget it. Let's just, <laughs> you know. But then I thought about it more, and I was like, well, then you're painting someone that is a form of discrimination. You're painting someone with a brush, guilt by association. Mm -hmm. Does Mr. Sylvester have the qualities to serve on this board? And, um, and, and he is. And he has the opportunity to recuse himself um, if he's voting on something that could pertain, you know, a conflict of interest for him and the company that um, he's worked for for many years, um, you know, is the property management component of this housing. Um, so, you know, I like his experience. I like the fact that he's been on the board before. He's just coming off the natural features protection committee and I also really like the fact that I'm big on neighborhood diversity for this board and we don't have anybody from um, the West Nage Hill neighborhood. I, I, I think it's a difference between being prejudiced and developing an analysis based on past and historic and current, um, you know, the, the current landscape of people's choices and how they operate in their philosophical bin and how that materializes into um, and, and impacts people in our community, you know, is the difference. And so I, I don't think it was discriminatory for us to think about that. And I think that as it relates to the lens of diversity, you know, some of us have the ability to be able to make those types of decisions because, you know, in a collective or individual context, we're not, I mean, Sadly, that's the that's the um, the the very unfortunate byproduct of centering white dominant normalcy is that there's individualism in that, not collectivity. Um, and so when we don't see ourselves like everyone, you know, we can see it like, well, that doesn't affect me. And so that's you know, I I, I think that we won't have well. You know, it, things balanced out because I'm on this board. You know what I'm saying? There's other people on this board that, you know, we can we all get a vote. That's it. So we all are diverse in that way. I can say that, and I'm I am grateful about that board chair, that we we all get a vote. You know, and that's so it. the five of us are voting on <laughs> one or the no, other. No, we the, already voted them. You guys already voted. Okay. Yeah, j just for clarification. So the interview team. Um, selected Allison Hahn for the regular seat and yes. Alan Sylvester for as an alt alternate. So, so we're, we have one regular seat that's vacant, and then we have two vacant alternate seats. Right, so, so we still have one opening on the board. We're not filling at this point. That, that's what I think. We should have some more options out here. And I guess Pete, that's why you're not selecting anybody right now because you're looking to have more people, you, more options? To, yes, yes, okay. we'd like to continue to do outreach, but yeah. the difficulty is this board is, you know, it, it, it's structured to make sure that we have a full board at every meeting, sure. that's why there's alternate Yeah. Mike's still working? So when we're running at a, you know, at a, in a situation where we only have a total of five board members, um, we, we want to, rectify that situation as quickly as we can. So this allows us to, to address that, that shortfall, yet 
allow us to continue to do outreach to fill that remaining vacant seat. Okay, and we have the vacant, we just need another alternate, right? Because we're supposed correct. to have two. We need one Co more correct. alternate. And then okay. as we have future vacancies on the board, those alternates are the first to have the opportunity to move up. And we recommend, well, I can say this, I recommend y'all participate in the process of uh, the democracy and citizenship. So your, your, your interest can be reflected. So then you don't be like, oh, I didn't know that was about to happen because these are the types of things <laughs> that happen. And then, then some one person or a few people, now they get to be the pariah or persona non grata because they're trying to reflect the interest of people and it's just not okay. So like, I would encourage people to like participate in constituent boards. I think it's imperative. Like now is a very important time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say something. Um, I supported both applicants right off the bat. Um, and I guess the, there were some questions about Alan Sylvester. Um, because he was a property manager slash developer, I guess at one point. But um, what really hit me was he, he actually chaired the ZBA board. Um, I don't know if it was the uh, 80s, but maybe the 90s. And um, he's just coming off, he termed out on the NFP board. Um, I didn't hear of any problems with him on that board and um, the NFP uh, ordinance is fairly complicated, mm. and um, I think it'd really behoove us to have someone with that knowledge on this board. Um, and also, um, I worked for a development company for a very long time that um, was actually out of town, but they had properties in town. They had a very mixed uh, community opinion of, about them, and. Um, didn't affect me at all, so. Good. Okay. All right, and, I, and I'll just add real quick here. So as far as geographic representation of our Zoning Board of Appeals from around the city, we have Beth Vanden Homburg from the Westwood neighborhood, Remy Heron, Vine neighborhood. Oh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Wark from the Stewart neighborhood, Tony McReynolds from the Northside neighborhood, <laughs> Joe Holler III from Edison, and the two candidates we're looking at here tonight, Allison Hahn is from the Arcadia neighborhood, which we don't have representation, and Alan Sylvester is from Westnage Hill. So, you know, that is, you know, that is our, our geographic spread, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna talk about the <laughs> zoning. Oh, Pete, don't be mad. We can. You can email us. This, the <laughs> vote can can be just a voice vote to yes to, to uh, move a recommendation Absolutely. to approve these individuals to the oh, sure. board. Oh, that's for voting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I vote yes to move these individuals' recommendation onto the board. Yes. And I second. Okay, so Mr. Holler moved, moved approval of the two candidates, seconded by Beth Vanden Homburg. Okay? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Allison right. Hahn and Alan Sylvester. Thank you. Okay, and now you are free to ask staff questions. <laughs> These are the board dates. Uh, These are the dates, right? The meeting dates down here. The, yes, the meeting okay. dates are on the bottom. Thank you. We're all second. <clears throat> okay. Thursday, right? Yep. Yeah. Every month. My and, calendar's set up. To just put it on. Yeah, and, and I and I can just give mm -hmm. j just a brief mm -hmm. overview. So this this rezoning that occurred, there was hundreds of properties around the city. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> is not not something that I've seen done in my entire career working for the city of Portage and city of Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a major undertaking to realize the zoning with the land use and with the future plans of the city. Mm -hmm. So given that you're working with hundreds of properties, it's, you know, unfortunately things happen. 
you know, folks that, you know, that we believe we've kept in the loop, uh, you know, don't get the information, miss one of the meetings, um, you know, as far as I know, we don't have any other circumstances quite like this 1019 Miller Road that was before us tonight. And, um, and then I know Beth had specifically asked about the commercial office zone district and the reason for that elimination. And it, and it really, it, it, it was because of the lack of flexibility of that commercial zone district. We but we want that. Yeah. We like and that. Mr. Stewart, stay talking to y'all about this. <laughs> you already know he call y'all all the time. So don't forget, just don't say it was only two well, no, people, no, Mr. But, Stewart, but stay I mean, talking to us. <laughs> but the, the, and that was where we had a number of, you know, public meetings oh, to yeah. collect feedback through, throughout that six month process mm -hmm. between essentially between February and August is when we, we wrapped it up and there were, you know, periods where the um, ordinances that were proposed to be changed were, were, were slightly mm -hmm. amended to address the citizen comments we were, we were receiving. So there was actually, if you look at it, the Imagine Kalamazoo website, there's several versions of those ordinance amendments as we worked through the year. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I, but, Personally, you know, feeling the phone calls from realtors and business owners, the commercial office zone district was very difficult to work with um, because of its lack of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the, a, and that was yeah. So it many did, people see that as a really really it, good yeah. Thing. So it because it, it didn't yeah. allow for retail any sort of retail um, business. Um, you know, it had to be specifically an office type mm -hmm. user. And it's, and that's fine if you're gonna have a, an accountant or an attorney or a um, credit yeah. union locate there, but sure. it, you know, it, it, it doesn't allow for a sit down restaurant or right. any of these other types of mm -hmm. um, amenities that many neighborhoods want. And so that's why we created this commercial community too, which is a step down from the type of commercial you see along Stadium Drive. Um, that is, you know, what we are, are, you know, have put in place along West Main as an example. Well, I, I go ahead, Beth. Sorry. Where my frustration comes from is, you know, and I'm not trying to say this against you, Pete, because I, I think maybe after this meeting, I mean, I think a collective conversation is important and maybe at, later we need to have another conversation so I can dig deep into this. But um, I don't know of anybody else on the board that was aware that this was gonna be changed. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything in my notes. I don't have anything because I, you know how I feel about my neighborhood and why I'm on this board. And I would have done something. Yeah. And if that meant resigning to advocate for my neighborhood, I would. And I've talked to some people in my neighborhood that normally receive those notices because as you know the church they've been wanting to change the zoning for 15 years and i'm angry that i started talking to people that receive those notices before and that's why they they come and fill this mm -hmm. and they didn't receive them and I, i'm not trying to apply it's some sort of a deep state with the city i i mean, I mean but you know, why didn't we know? And, you know, this is not good for my neighborhood. You come down Northampton, we used to have this beautiful Davenport College. And some folks in this city, I'm not saying that it's you, may move forward with a clear conscience. Like, oh, well, hey, they changed the zoning. Mm, ding, huh? Not us, that's Kalamazoo Township. Okay, just like 
uh, Kilgore is the dividing line bef between Portage and Kalamazoo. A lot of people don't realize that. So now all that giant green space, 10 acres back or however deep it was, is all gone and we have a car wash. Okay, it's like, hello people. And now the church. I would much rather have a doctor's office on the corner of my street than a Walgreens. So, you know, it's like, what happened? You know, and, and this Christina Anderson, you know, who, because I don't want to put you on the spot too much, Pete. I, you know, I enjoy working with you and I value you as a mentor and a colleague and a friend. But, you know, where do I need to start with this? Because, uh, yeah. I, I think where we can start with this is <laughs> I can get back to you on how we did that public outreach. You know, who were those mailings going to, you know, along uh, West Main? Right. And, and I, yeah, so why don't we start right. there so you understand better how that, because I, I don't have that background with me sure. tonight. Um, but I will, I will circle back to you with that. And then, and then, and then we can see what questions that raises right. afterwards. But, that was good, but yeah. as, a, as a zoning board, how come, how come yeah. we weren't aware of this? I agree with that totally. Um, what, I mean, I don't. Well, I had, I had made some cursory comments about the fact there were, there was this, this rezone, the, the rezonings going on that addressed the commercial districts and was occurring along the commercial corridors and that we were also at the same time making zoning ordinance amendments. I didn't okay. get, yeah, I didn't go oh, yeah. deep into the details, but I mentioned that. But it, we, we brushed on that. that and I, I was aware of that. I went to a couple yeah. of those meetings um, that the city had to kind of inform the public and there was a lot of there were a lot of people there there um, were there were there were I went yeah. to those um, one was uh, over at K College there was another one that was downtown and um, maybe I don't know my neighborhood was very aware we of had it a lot uh, of them. we had a lot of people go to it yeah. um, one of the one of the biggest problems in the rezoning was um, over on Stadium Drive and Stadium and Drake there where they wanted to put in another car wash similar the to the one. With yeah, it. yeah. So mm -hmm. there were a lot of people there that spoke up about that and then they just took the zoning right, the rezoning on that right off the table. So they made a difference. Right, but what I'm, what I'm saying is if, I mean I drive by that sign twice a day, I watch them constantly. And that sign says, <laughs> office, zoned office, you know. Had I known that, that was gonna change to commercial? <laughs> the the you know, car wash I, that's on, um, what is it, West Main? The that car giant, wash? that drive and shine, yeah. that's where Davenport College used to be. Yeah, that yeah. is actually um, Kalamazoo Township. Correct, yeah. And, I that has wanted, an impact, even though it is the township. Well, the township yeah. wouldn't rezone it for multifamily. It should have been a multifamily at least, you know, but they wanted the commercial. Sure, or they, or could, the have rezone, they could have rezoned it to commercial office. Well, sure. Yeah. The money that car, that car wash makes, and, and you know, I, I get it. That, that's the township, and they have the authority to change their zoning, just like you know, the, the, the city does, but I just, I'm like, what happened, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just she trying just to figure liked out. would have to have participated in the process. Well, well, yeah, Beth, why don't you and I talk yeah. individually, yeah. and then yeah, if, I, if anybody on the board wants an update at the next, share that with yeah. them. But can I say best. this to that? This is great. I should say this because I'm usually snapping but you guys rezoned my building on mill street and now i don't have to get a special use permit so thank you for that but i still didn't know about it so that's not right either but i am grateful that i don't have to for my intended use get a special use permit but i didn't know y'all were rezoning that Pete. 
I'm just saying. And I own that whole building. I own both of those properties, two and 10 mills. I didn't know that. I'm grateful, but I did not know that. All right. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Are we sure? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're sure. <laughs> okay.